Hey everybody, it's Brandon, The Weekend Cruiser, where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend, and today I am very excited to give you a tour of my home, my home ship, Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas. Now this ship was built around 2009 and can house up to 4,500 guests, give or take on the max occupancy numbers there. But it is a beautiful ship and many people love this ship because you'll see that it has plenty to offer. There is a ton to do on this ship, but it doesn't have that same size that your Oasis or Quantum class is gonna have where it may feel overwhelming to you. So you'll see why many people consider the Freedom class to be their favorite ship. Come on and let's check out Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas in a full ship tour. So as I always like to do, I'm gonna start here in your main dining room. So this is what is going to flank the aft part of the ship. And we'll quickly walk in because I think that it is a beautiful setup. They're getting ready for lunch here. But when you get into this style of glass, you're gonna see that it is quite large. Good morning. You're all right. And you'll see that it's gonna have quite the elegant look to it. Plenty of sunshine coming through here during the day. I've done some videos in here and the lighting is fantastic. But this is what your setup is gonna look like based on if you're my time or traditional dining, um, will determine the floor that you're gonna be going to. If we walk down, again, we are on deck three in the aft section. I'm not sure if I pointed that out. You'll see here in a second that this floor does not actually connect to the forward piece. So when you are looking at the crystal block showing you where you are going, there are some items that get in your way. You can't actually get there from here. So you're gonna start out with your Park West art gallery is gonna be the main thing. And if they're doing an art auction traditionally, I've seen them do it here under the staircase, but I think they're trying to move those more into the auditorium these days. And that might just be a COVID thing or I'm remembering wrong, but you've got Studio B. That's the big thing that I wanna show you all down here because it is a multi-purpose space and does a lot of stuff. If you're looking at getting pictures, you can come to the focus gallery. The swipe machines most of the time work. Sometimes they'll be asking for your room number, but it's super easy to pick them out. If you want a private picture, you can go through picture this. So this is the private photographer you can hire. And interestingly enough, um, I did have one of you, all of you reach out and say, hey, I need to chat with these folks. Um, oh, it looks like this may be temporarily closed and these are doors I don't like opening. because they are just a little too big. So we aren't gonna show that to you. I'll see if I can swing back by and get that and I'll edit it in if I can. But that's Studio B. It is gonna be where your ice skating rink is. So for free skating, if you wanna go in there and just ice skate yourself, you can do that or open skate, I should say. You will also have your ice skating show in there. And so here it is freedom.com. And you're also gonna have that be the studio or Club Red in the evenings, and when I say evenings, I mean like 11, 11.30, all the way till two in the morning. So if you are looking at staying on the other side of that, it is staterooms, so interior and ocean view rooms. Make sure you are going, if you are staying on floor two or three, all the way towards the other end, the very forward section, to get away from Studio B because it will uh, come through the walls and you will hear it throughout the night. Now we are on deck four. I'm gonna pan over here just to show you the godmother of this ship. Every ship does have a godmother, godmother. and here we have Catherine Calder. So if you wanna check her out, you're gonna have the main dining room that we've already seen. If I pan around, you'll see that they've left this area untouched. So it is part of Belarus. Great sitting area, place to hang out. You'll come over here to this section. This is where you're gonna find Belarus. This is gonna be the Latin bar for you know, great Latin music, salsa. Very energetic, especially here on the weekend cruise. We have a large Latin population and this area is very, very fun. Playmakers is one that I think is probably a, a more undervalued area of the ship. They have fantastic food. That's the biggest thing here. If you want a beer, if you want to watch a game, you can absolutely do that. Try their food, guys. It's really, really good. So you'll see that they've got some games you can play. These are all complimentary, by the way. I think, I don't believe you have to pay extra for these. I don't think that I've ever paid for them or maybe a friend has paid for it. Nope, they are complimentary. They do not take money. So you can come in here and play on the games if you want. The bar staff is always super nice. 
and it's got some arcade games for the kids or for uh, the kid at heart. You're then gonna have the casino on the other side. So I don't film in there, they're actually open right now it looks like since we're in Coco Cay. So I'm gonna turn off the camera and we're gonna pick back up on the other side. All right, so I am coming out of the casino now. Um, and it is open here in Coco Cay, something that you know used to not be the case. But here is your schooner bar. This is where you're gonna come for trivia, towel folding, and live entertainment in the evenings. It is a great spot to hang out and just enjoy. I like the chairs over by the window. And if you're really looking for somewhere to squirrel away, you've got this section way over here in the back that is definitely a more hidden section that you can go and hang out at. But this is where your pianist is gonna be. They bring different people onto the ship. Some of them have been fantastic. Some of them are really good singers but don't know how to draw people in. Um, and some of them are really true showmen who know how to sing, play the piano, and put on a fantastic show. You're gonna have Azumi, the hibachi, and sushi. And so I'm just gonna quickly peek in here, show you what Azumi looks like. Oh, that door is extremely heavy right now. I'll hit the button, see if that works. Nope. Oh, she's gonna let me in, she's being very kind. So I'll give you a quick tour of Azumi stepping in here. So you do have a sushi bar, so if you wanna come and just have sushi, you don't have to get the whole, whole song and show with the hibachi stations, but they've got a lot of hibachi stations. So if you wanna do a celebration of some kind, maybe it's a birthday, I always say that this is a great spot for that. Coming back out, I'll actually show you what the theater looks like. Pending that's not closed like Studio B was. I kind of hate that I didn't feel like breaking the rules there and uh, opening the doors up. But here is the upper section to Studio B. These doors, I don't mind as much. Normally you don't get into too much trouble, hopefully. But we'll bring you into the upper section of this one. If they're practicing, we'll turn around. But I do want to show you the theater because it is quite nice on this ship. And they are practicing, so this is as far as I'm gonna go. All right, so the singers and dancers were in there performing, and so we're gonna give them their privacy. If there was nobody in there, I'd give you the full tour. I was thinking today would be a great day to do a ship tour so I could get into these places and not have a lot of people in my way, but I always forget that, you know, this is a weekend cruise. So people are a little bit slower um, in getting off the ship. There's more people around, and apparently there's also some practicing going on. All right, let's step outside quickly. I'll show you what deck four. Uh, this is kind of a track. I would say the track is truly upstairs, but this is just a great place to get in some shade be outside, there is smoking on, I believe it's the port side that you can come out here and enjoy. You can also walk all the way up to the helipad. So I'm not gonna do that today, but you can go up to the helipad, which is a really cool place to grab some pictures. So if we go up to deck five, that's where you're really gonna see most of the um, activities on this ship, or most of the things that you know that you're gonna need to use. So I'm gonna start with the Star Lounge over here on the left, because we are now in the Ford section. Hi, hi, how are you? We're now in the Ford section, so this is the Star Lounge. One good thing to note about this ship, if you're looking for something, most of your food will always be in the back of the ship, the aft piece. Here's the library. There is one person sitting in here. And I'll just quickly show you what all is in the library. Very small, old connoisseur club for the cigar smokers. And then you've got Studio B. This is gonna be where there's a ton of entertainment, lots of activities. It looks like they're doing a next cruise presentation right now, so I'll be quiet. But this is a really neat hangout spot. They do Latin music, they do your game shows in here, uh, Battle of the Sexes, finish the lyric. This is gonna be the spot, and they do have a bar in the back of the room. 
Coming back out, you'll see more of the actual promenade for the first time. So the promenade does go over floor five, six, and seven down in the middle. So there's a hole in the middle of the ship. Um, but with that, it makes it beautiful. When I go to ships that don't have a promenade these days, I'm kind of like, eh. I love the um, Centrum that the older ships have, but I really do like a promenade. You're gonna have shops on here as you do on many ships. And you're gonna have Sorrento's over here that will serve you your pizza, some salads. They've got a few healthy things. Not too many options, but it is there should you want it. They do have the freestyle cook machines. They come with your refreshment package, so you have to pay a little bit extra for those, but they are on the ship if you would like them. When they do 70s night, they traditionally do those all the way at the other end. So you see the bridge there in the middle? That's where they're gonna go and they're going to perform for 70s night, Disco Inferno, all of your favorite songs. Here is the Bullen Bar, I think is what it's called on here. I don't actually come into this bar very often at all. They have um, a musician that is here. Yeah, it's the Bullen Bar. They do have a musician that stands over here on the left and sings, who's normally pretty good, but it can be a little crowded. It's a little small, so I don't particularly come in here very often. Where I do go, however, is directly across the hall. We've got Solera if you want to go and get um, some makeup supplies. And you can have an entrance to the casino from here that'll take you into the middle. But I actually like sitting over in Vintages. You can hear the musician in Vintages um, from Bull and Bar. So this is a great spot to also hang out out, to meet friends. It's normally a little bit more quieter and they've got some really comfortable places to sit. Coming to the other side, you're gonna have the logo and souvenir shop. This is gonna give you all of your Royal Caribbean branded merchandise, such as the cruise ships that you've seen me collect in my house. You've also got the Freedom of the Seas port merchant. There is a video that I'll try to remember to link um, on going over the prices and what all they offer. It's a little bit dated now, so I might need to update that. But you'll already see that they've got some unique products such as Hennessy White is sitting in there if you're interested in that. You've got Regalia Fine Jewelry. That's where your FE specialist is gonna be. So if you wanna go in there and say hello, they are a fantastic team. And you're gonna have Ben and Jerry's here on the left. Something that I've actually never done because I'm scared that if I ever do start eating the ice cream on the ship, I will not stop. And you're gonna have Cafe Promenade over here on the right. That is probably my favorite bar. Great people that work in there. We go way back. Some of them just came back from vacation. So it's always good to hang out with them. And they've got some food over on the left as well. And then if I come over to the other side, you're gonna have Shore Excursions or Shore X, as those frequent floaters like myself call it. You can come in here and, you know, go on the iPads that they have to set up your excursion, or you can just do it on your mobile app. You don't actually have to come into ShoreX. If you know what you want, you can sign up for that over the app. The market is gonna be the place, if you forgot more fancy clothing or normal clothing, if you are non-Royal Caribbean branded clothing, this is where you're going to come for it. So there's, you know, normally if they do a deal in here or a sale, guys, it's normally really good. I've gotten some great things in there for decent prices. Sometimes it's a little bit more expensive, but for right now, it's, uh, if they do have a sale going on, I'm not sure if they do, it can be really cheap. Next cruise, if you wanna make sure you're getting your next cruise benefits, make sure that you are coming over here. As you can see from the sign, book on board, you can save up to $600. That is if you're staying in the high end suite, of course, but these guys are very great at being able to walk you through what your options are. You're gonna have the R bar. So years ago, this used to be my more favorite bar. I'd come and sit over there in the corner where I could look out and see the entire room. Um, the seating in here is great. It's a good meeting spot for groups. There was a lot of people that came in here today to say, hey, before we go to Coco Cay, let's meet at the R bar. And that's, then we'll just go off from here. On the other side, you see that they have guest services. So if you have any issues with your account, your hotel room, this is where you're going to want to go to get those resolved. If you're looking for that off, awesome picture opportunity, you're gonna find that the picture folks will often be standing here in the middle of the Royal Promenade taking pictures. Beautiful shot from here, but you can also take your own. And then on the other side, you'll see, this is the last floor of the main, di main dining room on deck five. All right, so that is the main tour of the inside of the ship, especially decks three, four, and five. So now we're gonna jump on the elevator and head upstairs, and I'm gonna show you the remainder of the ship and a lot of the outdoor spaces. 
So we are now on deck 11, and I just wanted to show you the view from deck 11 after you're standing in front of the Windjammer. You can look all the way down to the promenade. It is a beautiful view, and you can also look outside to the pool. But there's a lot of light coming in, um, so that's a little overexposed, it looks like. But if I turn around, you'll actually see the Windjammer. So this is Coco K Day. So these are all your stragglers who are probably leaving from breakfast because they haven't been up yet. Again, if you're coming in here, the peak hours for the Windjammer are gonna be probably till about 10.30 on the weekend cruise, and it can be a madhouse in here um, with people everywhere. And I've got another video that I've done just on that, but I'll give you a quick tour of what this looks like. It doesn't matter what side you go to, they are about, they're the exact same. So if the left side or the right side is open, both sides will have the same kind of foods. But to start, oh, let me pan back over here. I wanna show you the special restaurants. So they do keep the special restaurants, here in uh, the Windjammer, so you gotta walk into the Windjammer. But this is Giovanni's Fine Italian, my favorite place on the ship to come and eat because the food here is so, so terribly good. You're gonna have your chefs who work back here preparing all the amazing food. But what I really like is the, it's not wood-fired oven, but it is a pizza oven back here that still gets really hot that makes some amazing food. The pizzas here, if you get a chance to try the egg truffle pizza, that is the one you're gonna to wanna to go after, the three cheeses, or no, it's eight cheeses, I think, seven cheeses. It's really good, strong blue cheese flavors, but it is fantastic. So if we walk back out, we will be back into the Windjammer, which luckily isn't open right now. And it's a Coco K day, so the Windjammer has kind of moved to Coco K. There'll be some buffets on Coco K that you can uh, eat at. They'll still have some snacks in here and they're gonna have a very light lunch because 95% of the people are gonna be on Coco K Island and that's where they're gonna be eating at. You do have your juices, so I'll just call this out. Normally, you'll have different lemonade, fruit punch, flavored waters here that you can use which do come complimented with your cruise. And you're gonna have water and ice. And lots of noise in the background. So my favorite place to sit in here so you see that there's more food options. I'm just gonna come over here, is behind this wall. You can see if the sun cooperates with us, beautiful Coco K in the background, but my favorite place to sit is gonna be back here out of the crowd, out of the masses. And it's not that it feels like it's a private dining room at this point, but it's very nice to have your own section uh, that you don't have to worry about you know, being out in the crowd of everyone else. And beautiful views, especially if you're coming to Coco K sit in the back, take in the views. It is a really nice experience. Gonna have more drinks over here and more food. Again, it doesn't matter if you go to the left or the right, this is a duplicate type of buffet. So whatever side you come in on, you will see that uh, you can find the food that you can eat. And again, there's no food out at this exact moment because they are switching between lunch and dinner. Oh, this side. Oh, thank you. I appreciate hello, that. Hello, everybody. Hello. If you've got a large family, these big tables here are really cool. Or if you're with a group, these large tables, the kids especially love eating at those. And for us solo cruisers, you've got the communal tables. So if you want to just sit by yourself, oftentimes you can snag a seat there with no issues. Coming back out of the Windjammer, again, all the food is always the same you're gonna have Chops Grill up here to the left. Now they do serve breakfast for your sweet lounge, and, or for your sweet guest and Pinnacle member guest. So we'll go in there and say hello to everybody. But in the evening is where they really shine with the steaks, they've got uh, Branzino, they've got my favorite, the lamb. I'll show you the sign so you know that I'm not lying to you. And we'll come in here to show you Chops. So th this is the more elegant of the restaurants that you can come to. It does come at a higher price point if you're looking at booking this, but the food in here is very, very good. Plenty of space all the way in through the back. They can also move tables together. Oftentimes, me and my friends wind up sitting here on the left towards the windows. They move those tables together and it is a great spot. But the maitre d' here is always willing to help you out and make those reservations. Brandon, how are you? I'm good, good to see you again. All right, so let's head back outside. That is the tour of the Windjammer. Oh, and for all of you that are on the weekend cruise and looking for a bar that doesn't have a line, 
dry the windjammer. Oftentimes, as long as it's not breakfast, they'll have uh, a minimal line that you can easily get to. If you go in there at breakfast, though, this can be a breakfast drinking crowd as well. So just make sure um, you may come. You may have to pregame for breakfast in the windjammer or bring your own drink because they'll be a little busy serving up the mimosas. All right, so we will walk outside now and hopefully the camera is not going to fog up on us. But I think that it's warm enough now that we've made a little bit of a transition already because these doors open and close very frequently on the ship with people walking through. But you're going to have all your seating for the kids section to start off with. So this is the pool area for your kids. There is tons to do. They love it. They do still have a lifeguard on duty here. So it is a good spot. And you're also going to have El Loco Fresh. This is a really cool spot to come and eat. They've got quesadillos, burritos, they've got nachos, all sorts of great stuff. And for those people like me who hate cilantro, they will be able to make it without cilantro for you. And they're going to have a little bar over here for you as well. For your fixings, you'll just come over here to the salsa station and you can make um, your own creation and put it all together. For the little ones, they do have some life vests for you to use, but their pool is currently closed, it looks like. You're gonna have plenty of hot tubs on this ship though. Hot tubs are tough to come by. So I don't often um, get into the hot tubs here because there are so many people that love using the hot tubs um, and I just kind of let them have it quite frankly. So this is also the smoking section. I will call that out. So we are on the uh, starboard side of the ship, port side. I should memorize that. Um, but this is also the smoking section. The other section is where you would not do that. Just look for the ashtrays and you're gonna be fine. You've got the lime and coconut, so it's going to have two bars and you're going to have your main pools that you can see better here. They used to use the section in the middle more as a stage, but down at the end is where your Caribbean band will always play. But a great spot to grab some drinks um, and to hang out with friends. Coming into the solarium, you'll see that the vibe changes. It is quieter. They have the music here is crickets and birds in the background, which is pretty neat. They've got a buffet bar here, but I've not seen anything set up on that buffet bar in years at this point. But I mean, it, it looks kind of nice there. They're going to have another bar here that is currently closed since we are in Coco Cay. But the solarium does have its own bar. It's also going to have a bridge and a section that you can walk across there, which I just think is a neat feature, though I don't do it too terribly often. It is actually quite steep. Um, but if you want to walk across it, you can certainly do that. And you're going to have two hot tubs on each side of the solarium. These also stay really popular throughout the evening. But if you're looking for daytime napping, this is gonna be the spot for you. Coming out here, we're gonna, we're on deck 11 now. And so I am walking towards the aft section of the ship. This is where, excuse me, I'm walking towards the forward section of the ship. You'll see that they do have some staterooms on these floors. So if you really wanna be close to the action, Stay on deck 11, this is where everything's at. But you're gonna have the Vitality Spa is on deck 11 forward. This is the gym, the fitness center in this case. Somewhere that I haven't been in a while, but I need to come back, I miss it. Um, but this is a really nice gym. It is my favorite gym in the entire fleet because you have amazing views and plenty of things to uh, work out with, lots of machines and lots of weights for you to use. And I'm not gonna give a full tour of this. I may come in and reshoot my old Freedom of the Seas gym tour, but this is the gym. Get a treadmill up at the front so you can jog towards the infinite water. But it is a really, really nice gym. But since this is just a very quick full ship tour, um, which there is nothing quick about a ship tour, by the way, you all, um, I'm gonna keep walking and not call out all of these individual machines. They will have towels in here for you, but you do need to bring your own water. So find a water bottle or go to a bar to get a cup. Um, they do not provide those here for you. They used to have vending machines, but I don't know where, where those went to. Um, and that is deck 12, so I'm still in the forward section of the ship. This is where your Vitality actual spa is gonna be, the Medi Spa. They will be glad to book you any procedure you want or massage. They're fabulous to work with. Thanks everybody. But that is where that tour is going to be. 
If they were closed, I'd give you more of a tour of that, but it looks like they have open, and I'm sure that there's probably some folks in there. So let's step outside and see what else is here on deck 12. And I think I'm going to go ahead up to deck 13 while I'm here to show you what that looks like. So when you come out from the forward section of the ship on deck 12, you'll see that you do have great views of all of the various pools, but you're gonna have this staircase over here that's a little hidden, but the only way to get to it is from the starboard and port side of the ship in the forward section. So we'll go ahead and walk up here. If you want a place to squirrel away, this is a really good spot as well. The one downside you can hear, I don't know if you hear it in the microphone, the exhaust, so you can hear the, I don't know if it's sucking air in or if it's pushing it out, um, but it's definitely a louder noise up here than you will find on the rest of the ship. And they don't have music going right now. Coming over, you've got your shower. So if you want to get some fresh water, this is a cool place. Kids love it. And I rarely see adults actually using it, but you've got putt-putt over here. I think this is, you know, the biggest thing for Freedom Dunes. I say come here in the evening. During the day, it can be a little bit warm, but if you come at night, you have everything that you need. You're gonna have your putters, and then you're gonna have your balls as well. So play the course. It's actually a lot of fun. It's not the hardest mini golf or putt-putt, but it is a really cool um, way to kill some time, especially in the evening. Maybe you're waiting for shows to start. It's a good place to come and hang out. You'll see beside of us, we've got Indy of the Seas, and I'll show you some features of it uh, when we get to the back, just to compare the two. But the Independence of the Seas and Freedom of the Seas are sister ships. So they are very similar to each other. They've got some uniquenesses in how they've been amped, um, but they are the same exact size. So when you are inside of this ship, you are gonna be able to see that there are a lot of similarities. Again, you've got your solarium just giving you a different view of it. This is a really, really cool spot. Hello, everybody. Hanging out and you can see they've got a bar over there. You've got plenty of chairs on Freedom of the Seas, which I personally like. And they face places that you can actually people watch, which is really, really neat. So they have really spread out. You've got some comfortable couches here. I don't see many people using these. These will heat up a little bit in the sun. But if you throw a towel down on it and you just want to sit and read, that is not a bad idea either. You've also got this hidden little spot, and I don't see many folks up here. So if again, if you want to look for a quiet spot, maybe on a sea day, on your four day cruise, you'll see that this is a little bit more packed, but it is well designed, well appointed. You've got a little bit different of a chair. I think those are designed so they don't fly away as easily, but this is again, a good spot to come and read and hang out if you want. Coming back down, we'll turn and walk towards the aft section of the ship. And I'm gonna cut through here, show you some of the casitas. So these used to be free, they're not anymore. They do charge for them now. I don't even know what they go for. I don't know what you get. I think they serve cheese, wine, crackers, all that good stuff, but you've gotta pay for those. So I'm not quite one of those who's gonna do it, but you know, I used to be able to snag one every now and again. The chairs do recline and they've got a little bit more padding, which is nice. You've got your eggshells over here that are really nice. Again, these will heat up in the sun as well, but they give you plenty of pillows. Hopefully they wash those frequently. I don't know why I think about those things, but hopefully they are keeping them clean for us. So you've got the pool, you've got your big screen where they may play a game or the movies in the evening. So right now I believe we've got, uh, what is the one where everybody sings or the uh, characters sing? I guess it's Invitation to Sing, maybe number two. They've got it on here, and I believe Encanto is also here right now, but those change on a frequent basis. You're gonna have a different view of the kids' Splash Away Bay, and you're gonna be able to see into the aft section of the ship, and you can see up to the Olive and Twist bar that we're gonna go to here in a little bit of a second. So you see that this is where I was saying between deck 12 and deck 14, there is nothing on deck 13. So I was totally getting my floors wrong earlier, 
but wanted to walk you through these. And I'm going to follow these people, it looks like, back here to Johnny Rockets. So if you're looking for, again, a type of food um, that's not too terribly expensive, it is an extra upcharge, but it is not bad at all to come and pay for the food here. My favorite is the foot-long chili dog and always getting a sundae. That's my favorite thing to do. So you can sit inside if you want some air conditioning. Got the menu listed here, but it is a classic Johnny Rockets. And you're gonna have pretty hard plastic chairs over here. Um, but I normally sit outside, especially if it's at night and the ship is moving, there is a good breeze that comes through here that keeps it on the cooler side. Two restrooms here on the right. So if you're one of those who likes to look for individual restrooms, this is where you're gonna come to and you're gonna have your teens only area. So adults, not allowed, so I'm gonna stay out of this section, but if you are a teenager and you wanna hang out in Social 033, you can do that there. And I'll give you a sneak peek of, they've also got this section here in the inside. But it is a fun spot. And again, if you walk back here to the back of the ship, the aft section, especially in Coco Cay, you're gonna have beautiful views of Coco Cay. They've got plenty of loungers out here. You're not close to the water or anywhere really to um, dry off, if you will, or excuse me, get wet. So cool off is what you want to do. But you can sit out here and enjoy the view of Coco Cay. It is an absolutely beautiful day in October. It's middle of October and it is warm, but it is very, very nice. So we'll head upstairs and show you the flow rider. It is not going now, but always make sure you're checking the times for those. The line for the flow rider can be pretty long, but if you come in off hours, it cannot be uh, too terribly bad. They do have some stadium seating for people to watch and you're gonna have your slides. So for the kids, you're gonna have the slides over there that you can enjoy. Uh, make sure that you're coming over here to the TV area and getting fully checked in. That's where you're going to tell them you're actually of the correct height to make it on the ship. And if you're a kid, hold on a second, we'll walk past this music. If you are a kid, you do have to have your uh, parents sign off, but the entrance to the slides is right there on the right of this uh, sign-in booth. Coming further back, you'll see, we've got some ping pong tables. So if you like playing ping pong, these are set up in a cool area. You get a lot of sun, um, just make sure you're ball does not go too terribly far away. It may bounce off the ship. And you're also gonna have the basketball court here. See a lot of people playing um, soccer um, in there as well, but basketball is the primary sport. And you've got the rock, rock climbing wall. So if you wanna be adventurous, this is a place for you as well, is to come and find your course, which one's gonna work the best for you. It is uh, this one's one of the bigger ones. It's got a couple of sections to it. So if you want to be challenged, you can do that a few times and it is complimentary with your cruise. Walking back in, we are still on deck 12 at this point. Interesting, this door here is now a sliding door. It used to be a door you had to physically pull and the air that would come through here was extensive and the door would often slam and it would break. So I am very happy that they finally upgraded it um, and gave us that. So there's nothing inside on deck 13. This is all that you have. If you want a good view of the outside or you know, the kids area, the pools, you can always walk up here to the window. This is a neat place to stand and do a little bit of people watching. Um, so you see that that is it. And I'm still surprised how many people are on the ship in Coco Cay. It is almost probably what? noon at this point and there are a lot of people here which is very very surprising all right let's walk up to deck 14. this is going to have your lounges and it's going to be your nightclub on the first night of the weekend cruise so this is the olive and olive or twist 
And it is a neat one. So when you walk in here, you're gonna see this is your dance floor. So if you're coming in the evenings, you kind of got to sneak over here through the right because it will be very crowded. You've got a large bar. There's no good place to stand to make sure that you are getting service. Um, just, you know, it's a regular bar and it's gonna be a little bit crowded, but it is a cool spot. If you're looking at doing private events, you maybe have a group on board, a wedding. This is also an awesome spot to do that as well. Good sound system. Every now and again, though, there's some trivia, things like that up here as well. So now let's head into the Diamond Lounge. I will pull out my key so we can get access and I'll show you everything Diamond Lounge. Hi there. Looks like a full house in here today, so I won't stay too terribly long. This is where your concierge is gonna sit. And you also saw that you have an outdoor space there as well. So you wanna come grab a coffee, cafe, get some food. They have, I go there for breakfast a lot, honestly. They've always got um, individual salmon. You can make like a smear, those kind of things. So it's a really cool spot. If I walk over to the other side, you'll see that we have the suite lounge. So this is for grand suites and higher and for Pinnacle Club members. And one thing that most people don't notice, if you look up here, you got a beautiful light fixture. I love the little purple balls there, but they're extremely hidden. This is also an automatic door, so when you put your key in, it's just gonna pop open for you. And it is much quieter on this side, so this will be where I'll spend a little bit more time, but you can have some good seating in here. The seating here is different than it is in the Diamond Lounge. You've got your sweet concierge that will sit here and help you out. Um, they are always fantastic on this ship. The weekend cruise does not get many Diamond members, and oftentimes um, the sweet lounge stays pretty empty. So you can really have at it with the concierge and ask them all sorts of questions, and they'll be very glad to help you. If you come with a group, these purple chairs here make a great sitting spot. You see that they're already kind of arranged for a larger group, but this is where me and my friends like to come and hang out. The biggest benefit to these lounges, arguably, is gonna be this espresso machine. So you don't have to use one of your drink coupons if you are a Diamond member uh, to come into the lounge and get one of these first as you would in Cafe Promenade, but the coffee there is wonderful. You'll see that they do put a little bit out for lunch, though it's a Coco K day, so not many people are gonna be here and they wanna put things that will not spoil. So those things can sit out for a little while. I normally come up here and grab a cookie, though I'm trying to wing myself off of the cookies, but it's, it's a tough ask some days. You're gonna have the outdoor space of the suite lounge where you can come, enjoy, hang out. And these chairs sit really, really nice. Oftentimes I'll come up here, especially for breakfast, have my breakfast over in the diamond lounge and I'm gonna come sit outside, get some of that warm Caribbean air and really enjoy myself, start the morning slow and eventually I will get off the ship to enjoy my day. So that is the tour of my home ship, Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas. Thank you for hanging with me for that. I know this is a longer video um, and it is warm outside. You can see I'm sweating up a little bit. I don't like to sweat too much on camera, um, but I am glad to be able to share with you my home ship, Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas. It is the Goldilocks size. It's not too big, not too small, but offers plenty of things for the entire family to do. All right, everyone, this is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, hoping to see you on a weekend cruise soon.